right, so we're just going to jump right ahead into the, Brenda, do you have the document up on your computer, by the way? I do, I do. All right, great. So we're just going to jump right into the welcoming messages. Um, I'm Katie. This is my lovely co-host. Brenna. <laughs> Brenna. We're best friends. Um, we started this podcast uh, a week ago. Um, we had this idea that we wanted to create like this spooky corner of the internet where we just shared crazy stories that people will write into us, send us over email. We have listeners that send us anonymous stories. We have people that send us stories that are non-anonymous. We find stuff on Reddit. We find stuff in the craziest corners of the internet and share it all in one big spooky pile for you guys. And if I'm ever at any point being too loud, you guys let me know. I'm still working out the kinks on my mic. I'm going to jump back to the comments. Um, I'm sorry. I'm all over the place right now. Let me just make sure you guys are doing good. Give me five seconds. Um, so if you're returning again, hello, ghoul friend. We're so glad you decided to come back for more disturbingly good content. Um, it sounds like we got a good relationship going on here. Uh, we hope that if you're joining our own content, you'll help sustain future episodes and even better content by becoming a monthly patron of this podcast for your monthly choice of 99 cents, 4.99 or 9.99, whichever price you choose, your patronage will be used to help bring you even better episodes, um, better guest quality, which is kind of what we're working on here right now and more. Um, last week we discussed with our guest, Samantha, who's actually watching the podcast right now. She came on and told us about some crazy encounters that she's had. Um, we're hoping to talk to Kent a little bit about what she experienced today. We were thinking maybe it had something to do with imps. Um, I don't know if you guys, I know you guys are pretty familiar with Kent's content. He's discussed the topic of imps before. Um, so we thought maybe that might've been something that my cousin had seen. Um, I do want to throw out a disclaimer though disclaimer we are extremely aware of the fact that we are discussing real life instances with real people in some of these stories it's something we're very sensitive to so please understand our commitment to respecting the human beings involved in these stories um, if commenting or interacting with an episode or social media slander of any kind regarding the people whether they be anonymous or not will not be tolerated keep your opinions respectful or don't share them at all it's that simple so Brenna and I are going to go ahead and read the um, what's going to become the iconic portion of um, our disclaimer. If descriptive, supposedly true stories centering around gory real life topics, paranormal encounters, or anything surrounding extremely descriptive true narratives involving terror, murders, sexual interactions, mental health, anything violent or potentially cruel in nature, we suggest that you Get, get the, the f out. Yeah, get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is not for you and you have been warned. So now you is your time to, to leave. Mm -hmm. Let me jump back over to the comments just to make sure. Hello, Lee. Welcome. Oh, I'm so glad to have you guys here. This is awesome that we have nine viewers here. Ten viewers. This is awesome. So glad you guys are here. So first story we're going to jump into. And by the way, just to let you guys know that came in, we will have Kent on at about 625, 630, but we do have some content before him. Um, and then we're going to finish off the rest of the podcast with Kent. So I'm very excited to have him. We are so thankful that he decided to come on the podcast. Um, so I'm going to read some of our anonymous sentence. Um, let me check it out. It's going to jump me to my email. So give me five seconds. Hmm. Hi, James. Hi, George. Good to see you guys. Good to meet you guys, I guess. All right, Brenna, I'm going to read you these. Yes, please do. I'm ready. So we had an anonymous person send in some crazy, crazy stories. And we're from Virginia. So we are pretty, well, I'm pretty close to the Richmond area. And a lot of these stories center from Richmond, Virginia. So I was allowed to share that portion, but this person's name is completely taken away. And she even took the liberty of removing these, um, these, oops, what was that? Oh, Kent jumped into the waiting room. Okay, great. Kent's here. So we'll have him on in a few minutes. But anyway, um, all right. She says, we, below we is... do have somebody asking, where did you learn about Kent, Katie? Ah, I learned about Kent 
two years ago, I was watching content on YouTube. I was actually at a really low point in my life, but one of my favorite things to do is watch scary stuff. And somehow Kent popped up when I was searching something along the lines of like, oh, Mr. Frostmare or King Frostmare. I feel like a lot of people heard about him from uh, King Frostmare. I think that's his YouTube name. So yeah, that's where I first found his content. And um, yeah. Anyway, let's jump into these stories. So again, these stories are from Richmond, Virginia. Jimmy John's bike delivery. She worked 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. shifts. This first story is centered around the LSD guy. That's what she's named it. It was the beginning of the night, 11 to 11.30 p.m. We got an order for a sandwich for some guy at an apartment building. Now, this apartment building was about 16 floors high, and the order was for the 16th floor. There's only two apartments on this floor. One door was normal looking. The other door had no doorknob. I could just push the door open with ease. Guess which one the sandwich was ordered from. Uh, so I knocked on the side of the door and shouted, Jimmy John's. I waited, with, uh, or I waited for a couple minutes wondering what I stumbled upon. Did someone get murdered? Why was there no doorknob and why me? After waiting a couple minutes, I finally heard someone coming down the hallway towards the door. I thought maybe it's an old man. The door flew open and a man in his thirties or so was standing there only in his boxers. His um, eyes were only pupils, very black. I slowly handed him the sandwich and he hesitated to take it. Then as fast as he could, as fast as he could, he snatched it from my hands and then he threw the door closed. The door swung back open and he crawled down the hallway. I got back on that scary elevator, hoping it wouldn't fall down all 16 stories and got out of that situation. She thinks he was on LSD, but that's still really, really, really fucking scary. Yeah, that would make sense, I guess, if he was on LSD because um, the pupils do dilate a lot. Yeah. But that's still horrifying really horrifying I think the fact that like he crawled down the hallway is just absolutely like the most disgusting part of that story <laughs> in his boxers <laughs> yeah in his boxers <laughs> it probably was like really fucking scary I don't know how anybody could work in a city like Richmond at like really late at night I feel like being and, a delivery and dude, like driver. food delivery like you never know like what Mm -hmm. oh yeah working in food service I feel like was the most difficult job I have ever had and I can't imagine working in food service but in my own car delivering it to people's houses it's different when you're in a restaurant situation because I guess at least didn't she say she was on a bike or no yeah she was on a bike and that's, that's even crazy. worse <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I'm reading the comments now yeah yeah crazy all right, next story, let's see. We got shower soda, a funny tale. So this one ends up being kind of funny, but still kind of like creepy. Um, she said, I got the sandwich and uh, looked at the notes and delivery address. Soda shower, please, it said on the notes section. What is a shower, shower soda? And a side note, I've heard of like a shower beer. You've heard of a shower beer, right, Brenna? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of that. But like, why would that be specified on the order? No idea. That's a, no, that's a personal choice. <laughs> <laughs> she said, what is a shower soda? The whole restaurant wanted to know, talking about her coworkers. She said, so I took the order, got to the apartment and knocked. Moments later, a butt ass naked, beautiful woman opened the door, signed for her sandwich, took her shower soda and winked, closing the door. I go back to the store and all my coworkers are males and tell them my story. Um, shower soda became our new inside joke. What? <laughs> was she hoping it was like a male delivery driver or something? I don't know. I don't know. I think the fact that she winked, she was probably like, you're still cute though. <laughs> That'd be That's my guess. so weird. <laughs> All right. This next one I found very interesting. Someone said the visual is bad. Um, I apologize. I'm really I not sure they, why I think they meant the visual of the guy crawling in the boxers oh I hope that's what they meant I'm sorry if the visual's bad guys I hope the sound quality is at least all right um, we were working pretty hard on the sound quality and I'd be really upset if it ended up like 
crapping out on me now. That would just be my luck though. All right, this next one is about a shooting that occurred in Richmond, um, right next to her house, actually. Actually, it was on a, on a shift, um, but this story's crazy. The shooting on Cary Street and Bow Street. This was a seven to 12 a.m. shift and I'd reached the apartments on Cary Street and knocked on the door. As soon as I did, I heard two gunshots pretty close by. As this is something that I occasionally hear, I don't really panic, which by the way, hearing gunshots, like, I, I mean, I guess living out here in the woods, I live in the sticks. So I hear gunshots a lot and I'm just like, oh, someone's hunting or it someone's practicing. Sense, yeah. Though, but like because in the city, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. If I guess she's shooting just like, in the city, then they're shooting at someone. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and George did me in the visual of a guy in a boxers. I guess I should say that from the last story. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, she said it was really normal. Um, she said the girl opened the door and asked if I heard the shots. And I said, yeah. Um, and behind us across the street, we saw a male running as fast as he could. Then we get the alert being it is on a college campus. Every time an incident occurs, it alerts the entire campus. She pulls me inside her apartment and asked me to wait for a few minutes since we didn't know what was going on. With Jimmy John's, they stop all deliveries until an all clear message is sent out by the college. Of course, they called asking where I was because my delivery was on the same block as the shooting. I made it back safely that night. Another story added to my list. In my 12 month run with Jimmy John's, every time there was a shooting, I was always on the block or the block next to it. I ran a delivery to a friend that lived close to my house and I was thinking I could run by my house and grab something, yet the friend took forever to come get her food. So I thought I better just go back to the store. As I was getting on my bike to head back to the store, I, had, I heard shouting and a few gunshots. I biked back to the store because I was so used to the violence at night in the city. An hour later, I get off and head home. The house next to mine covered in crime scene tape. Cops were everywhere too. Apparently, the neighbors got into an argument and one shot the other, killing him. Only a week later, we had some people knock on our door saying they had guns and would shut us if we didn't, it would shoot us if we didn't open the door. Sorry, there was a typo. Thankfully, they left and didn't try to break down our door. This was one of the rare nights we locked the front door and I moved shortly after. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. Yeah, I know, Samantha. I agree. Rare I was nice that they locked the front door in Richmond. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why she didn't lock her door, but yeah, oh I mean, she was, she's just so used to the, the violence. I don't know. Maybe she's just really desensitized to it all, but oh my God. Yeah. Right. You wouldn't catch me. Mm -mm, I'd be locking my door. I lock my door out here and I live in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, oh my God, no, I'll be damned if someone gets the chance to come into my door. I don't care where I live. Mm -mm. <laughs> a gun for a sandwich stealing. It was a busy Friday night and there was some festival going on downtown. I had so many orders going out to that area naturally. And I got to an apartment building and called the customer because he didn't leave the door code. I got no answer two times. Then a car pulls up behind me and said, hey, Jimmy John's. I walked over thinking this must be the guy. I get to the car, which had its top down and asked for the guy's name, customary with delivery orders. And he said nothing. I looked into the car, seeing his hand on a gun in the passenger seat. Not sure what to do. I handed him the sandwich and he sped off. The customer then calls me saying he's at his apartment door and there he was. In the next 15 minutes, I had to go back to the store, get his new order and go right back to the same area that that just happened. Never caught the guy to my knowledge, but I hope he enjoyed the free sandwich. <laughs> oh my gosh. James just commented and said, I hear gunshots every day. There's a rifle club with a range near my house. Yeah, same. I hear there's someone, my neighbor shoots uh, targets behind his house and it's so loud and I hear it and I'm like, there he is again. But I mean, if I heard gunshots, my natural instinct is to think like someone's probably shooting a deer out in the woods or someone's probably practicing mm -hmm. target shooting. I mean, Brenna, you grew up in the, in the woods oh, too. Yeah. You live in the city now, but like, you know exactly what I, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. You live in a more, <laughs> yeah. Compared to where you live, I guess you could say that I live in the city. I thought you lived like in the city. I really no, did. I I'm sorry. City. My bad. My bad. All right. It's a town, it's... technically. I didn't know that. 
I see. Once again, I'm still getting the DC area mixed up with where you actually live <laughs> because to me, Nova, Northern Virginia, to me, and Samantha's probably laughing at this because she lives up in Dumfries, but um, yeah, I, I'm laughing because she's she lives up in Dumfries, which is also Northern Virginia, and she's probably like Northern Virginia is not all DC. I'm like, yes, yeah, but is. like you equate it, you're like DC <laughs> and Northern Virginia are the same thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't help it. Yeah. All right. Well, it's 6:25, so Brenna, I'm gonna put a hold on your story, and I'm gonna put a hold on the rest of these stories. We're gonna let Kent come in, and we're gonna start the interview. I hope you guys are excited because I know I am. All right, let's see how we can get him in here. I think he's in the waiting room still. I admitted him. Is he? There he is. Hey, Kent. Can you hear us? Can you hear me okay now live? I sure can. Mm -hmm. okay. Are we all right? Is okay, that better? I can hear you now. Yeah. Yay. Awesome. Okay, good. Probably. Okay, yeah. Now oh. that's better. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> all right. I was Everyone's... Like, okay, either, either there's spirits talking over the top of you guys or, or i'm getting some type of feedback here so i'm not a i'm definitely not a tech person so. it's okay hey we're here to help you we're here to help you no worries all right i'm just going to jump right into the questions that we have ready for you this first one's going to be a multi-layer question and by the way guys um not going to be reading the comments until after so kent um for those of our listeners who don't know who you are, can you just go ahead and give us a brief background on who you are and what your YouTube channel is all about? Yeah, my name's Kent. Um, I do paranormal investigations in my house outside of my house. And my YouTube channel is called Ghosts of Carmel, Maine. Hmm. And I didn't really think I'd ever be a paranormal YouTuber, but here I am. <laughs> Has this been, is this your first podcast you've ever been invited to be on? I know you've had a lot of like news oh, channels no. reach out to you. No, I didn't I've think so. A few podcasts. I was wondering, I was going to say, Kent, you're very popular with people. I'd assume you have a lot of people asking to have you on their podcasts. Um, so we're glad you can be on ours. Um, so go ahead and give us a brief history of your house, the lamb house, um, and those that occupied it. I'd be very interested. Why is it called the lamb house? Well, the house was originally constructed um, by Edmund Lamb, he moved uh, two buildings to this property, existing buildings, and he built on to the structures that he moved here. He built a barn in the back of the house, and this was actually his funeral parlor. He was an undertaker. That is so fascinating. This was opened up about 1900, and he sold his undertaking business out in 1919. After he passed away, his wife sold it to the Colsons, who lived in this house from 1947 to, well, actually, they lived in this house a lot longer. They were renting the house, and then they decided to buy the house, and back in 1997, uh, Mrs. Colson sold it to a person that turned it into a rental property, and they had multiple renters coming in and out of the house after that. All right. Do you think there was multiple renters because of the situation going on inside of the house or just I do know some renters moved out because of the activity inside the house. I was going to say cuz the stuff that you have seen is I would have moved a long time ago. I don't know how you deal with it. <laughs> yeah, there is when we first moved into this house, my son was talking to a Carmel resident that he said, "Well, man, you guys live moved into that house." And my son said, "Yep." Yeah. <laughs> He goes, yeah, we used to live there. We had to move out of there. You know, that place is haunted. And you know, it's like, understandably okay. so. I mean, the stuff you have seen just in your bedroom alone, I don't know how you guys are able to deal with it. I don't. Yeah, I, I personally wouldn't be able to. Woo! So. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, there's not always really serious, heavy duty mm. needing to wear a diaper moment times in this house. I mean, those are rare. Those, those do happen, you yeah. know, but. It's not something that happens every single day where now there's activity in this house every single day, but that's mostly mm. disembodied voice, things mm. moving, strange sounds, you know, uh, footsteps that takes place every single day. But mm. when you start getting the heavy duty stuff, that's pretty scary. I mean, that's that's kind of rare. I mean, it, right. it happens. I, I would say at least once a week, there's something I see in here that startles me. 
but when I started these investigations and started stirring up this activity, I was doing it every single day, investigating, mm. recording. And, and I think that really stirred the pot of paranormal activity. It, it, it I mean, the, pa- the, the activity came pretty powerful, but now that I've slowed down quite a bit recording in the house, we still get the activity, no doubt. Mm but it's not like it was when I first started doing these investigations. Right. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Yeah. That was going to be my next question was, do you feel like it's stirred up because of, you know, you investigating a little bit and kind of getting into the depths of their backstories and everything, because they were real people, you know, they died and their spirits in your house now that have backstories and you're digging into their real life you know, excuse my language but they're shit and it's deep it's dark mm-hmm. and you know you're really bringing it to the surface and they don't like it mm-hmm. so i would assume they probably get really angry yes yeah. and unfortunately um i don't like investigating dark stuff i i mm-hmm. i know that's popular with people they love demons and dark supernatural yeah. type stuff but I, that's not that's not me but unfortunately a lot of the activity here and the encounters when I do communicate with these spirits, unfortunately, is a lot of dark stuff. Mm, yeah. You know, and it's something that you have to deal with. The, the investigation I'm working on now on the next video coming out, that's not going to be dark at all. I mean, it's a pretty amazing story behind um, the encounters that I've had recently with a particular spirit here in Carmel. Mm. And you know, you, you tend to be more enthusiastic when you're dealing with activity that's not dark. Mm, yeah. But when you start dealing with constant dark encounters, you just really want to pack up and get out of it. That's mm-hmm. a good point. Yeah, that's actually, I could see how that would be true. That's why I would say if I ever encountered something people sitting on my bed and being like full-blown imps or shadow apparitions in my room, I would want to leave. But if I encountered someone like Rachel or Naomi, I would probably want to stick around. So yeah, I can understand that. Uh, Yeah. So the next question I have, and I do, I want to come back to that specific topic that you were just talking about, but um, your YouTube channel, which now has almost 2,000, 200,000 subscribers, excuse me, wasn't always this big. So give us a background on how you came to not only start your YouTube, but how you found yourself in the Lamb House and why you wanted to start filming everything going on. What was your initial goal and what is it morphed into now? Well, we decided, when we first moved here to Maine, we came up from Florida. Ah, yeah. And when we came here to Maine, we said, yeah, let's save some money. And we stayed in a camper um, outside my mother-in-law's place over on Fuller Road here in Carmel for two years. Oh, wow. And, you know, we saved up some money and, you know, my wife and I decided, you know what, I do not want to stay another winter in this camper. You know, <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Well, this house next to the mini mart came up for rent and my wife works at the mini mart. She does not like driving on the snow. Very convenient. So, it's like right yeah, next to your when house. <laughs> when this house came up for rent. She goes, Hey, we yeah there's an old absolutely. house next to the mini mart you know we can rent that out and blah 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 and yeah i'm like cool i never even seen the inside of the house yeah we rented it and i walked into the house for the first time when i moved into this house now i need to clarify something here i did not believe in the paranormal mm. i believed in spirits but like most people well, a lot of people believe that any type of supernatural encounters, it's demonic. I didn't believe in ghosts. I didn't believe in encountering humanoid spirits that that didn't exist. So I, you know, when we moved into this house, I did not believe in the paranormal. The, the night we moved in, we got stuff unpacked, started setting stuff up. I mean, we didn't have a low, whole lot because we just came from a camper, but we bought different things around Carmel. We there's a gentleman that passed away. We bought from his estate furniture, bed, stuff that we needed. Mm-hmm. And I was getting ready for work the next morning. And there's this little rocking horse on top of the dresser. And the rocking horse flew off the dresser 
about three mm. feet across the room and landed on the bed in front of me. And mm. I'm like, wow, mm. either this house is really old or I need to seriously lose some weight walking around this room <laughs> causing the horse to fly off. That was my explanation why that horse flew off that dresser and landed on the bed. Well, I put the horse back on the dresser and I'm jumping around the room trying to get it to move. It wouldn't even budge. I go downstairs and huh. tell my wife, I said, look, uh, something strange happened upstairs. I was getting dressed for work and a freaking horse flew off the dresser and landed right on the bed right in front of me. Oh my God. And she was like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what are you supposed Whatever. to say to that? Whatever. You know, yeah. but as time went by, we started noticing more and more things that I'm like, you know what? There's something going on in this house. Yeah. My son and our adopted son was staying up in the witch's window room and I heard some commotion going on and he said that um, they saw an apparition in the bedroom, a, a dark figure standing in the bedroom at the foot of his bed. Oh my God. And at the same time, he was having a massive nightmare that in his, and the other guy was having a nightmare of demons. Oh I figured God. they were just, you know, they woke up and they were, they thought they saw something. Mm. I didn't really take it to heart, but mm. I do admit that when there's times I was alone in this house, I'd hear talking downstairs. I'd come downstairs. There's nobody in the house. Yeah. You know, at night when I'm sleeping, you know, the loud furniture rattling sounds in the bedroom, mm. you know, footsteps through the house. Now, some people will say, oh, that's just temperature change. You know, you're just over exaggerating. You know what? At my age, I know the difference between a temperature change and something that's just flat out not right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Something that's very abnormal. These were abnormal sounds, but. I contributed it to the fact I never lived in a house this old before and maybe the house just makes those types of sounds mm. you, you know because you don't want to accept the fact that there's some type of activity going on in this house well after two years in this house I ended up getting injured and um you know I got to the point that I'm just you know I wasn't able to work and when I started staying home full time in this house, that's when I really started noticing things. Mm. Then one night, that's when all hell broke loose, basically. I, I was asleep in bed and I heard this walking sounds coming up the steps and I was waiting for the door to open up any moment. I'm like, okay, somebody's coming up the steps. Something must be wrong. You know, the sound woke me up and and then I hear this female voice that says, help me. Mm. And I turn around and look, my back's to the door in the closet. I was facing my wife. And then I was thinking, you know what? Maybe that's my wife talking in her sleep. You know, maybe, um, you know, whatever. But yeah, I laid my head back down. My eyes are wide open looking at the back of my wife's head. And then I felt this tapping on my hip. And the oh female voice says, help me, can't. Oh my God. You know, then I sat up in bed really fast. I'm like, you know what? Okay, there's <laughs> definitely something going on here. Absolutely. That next day is when I started doing investigations. Mm. Wow. I picked up my cell phone camera, started taking pictures nonstop, mm. started mm. recording. I called in a paranormal investigator. I, sh you know, I, I got a hold of them. They looked at what I had, they looked at the pictures, and, and I told them what was going on. They came in here and yeah. The first thing they said is, wow, I've never seen my equipment act like this before. <laughs> you know, and their conclusion was, yeah, you definitely got activity here. Oh, you know what? But I want another opinion. I want to see what somebody else is going to say about it. So I called in another paranormal investigator. Exact same thing. All the strange. same. She says, wow, I've never seen my equipment do this before. And <laughs> she goes, wow, you definitely got activity. I mean, she was so impressed. And one mel, I mean, she had a spirit box going. I'm like, yeah, right. You know, because I'm such a skeptic. Yeah. It's not even funny. I'm like, you know, spirit yeah. box don't work. So she has that going. And I hear this F-U-B-I-T. Mm. And I'm like, well, that didn't come over the radio. And then we were testing it. I said, do, uh, do you know my granddaughter's name? And this female voice clearly said Kaylee. 
<gasps> man, I look oh, at my wife, wow. we both look at each other. I'm like, holy crap, there's no way that was radio chatter. It, the voice intelligently answered back and it was a female voice. So then I knew without a doubt, there's definitely something going on here, but I didn't know what it was. Hi, do you have a crazy ass story that you just want to share with everyone that you know? Because if so, we have the place to do it. DM either Brenna or I on our Instagrams linked in the bio below, or you could email us at hello.spook33 at gmail.com. Your interview can be anonymous, it can be in person, it can be over Zoom or over phone. We could read your stories. It's completely up to you. Just email us or DM us and let us know. Mm. Okay, are these demons or are these ghosts? You know, or is there a mixture of both? Right. Mm-hmm. So I started doing my own investigations and recordings, walking through the house. You know, like I said, all I had was a cheap cell phone. Mm-hmm. Well, I talked to my brother about it. We, you know, I showed him the pictures. He asked about the house. And I said, Mike, what do you think? Do you believe in ghosts? He goes, uh, he goes, I don't, maybe it's all demons. So I really didn't know. Mm-hmm. So I started, I watched a few youtube paranormal channels trying to understand paranormal and you know trying to get an understanding of what they have to say about their encounters and in all honesty i mean they weren't i didn't see anybody capturing stuff and mm-hmm. i didn't see stuff going on in those locations that they were going through that was happening in this house and i mm-hmm. called that female paranormal investigator back she came back a second time <clears throat> excuse me and the activity was even stronger she said this house is very unusual she goes i'll tell you that right now she mm. goes this is really unusual mm. type of activity she goes i've never seen anything like this so i started setting up cameras i, bu- I went to walmart bought a cheap camera and digital camera i set it up different places around the house recording and started capturing things you know the horse flew off the shelf went flying hit the bed you know of course everybody wants to say oh he had fishing line attached to that I'm like yeah, yeah you know don't watch it yeah but mm-hmm. the youtube channel wasn't supposed to be for you know paranormal investigations or nothing i started up the youtube channel so my friends and family right see, you know pictures and video of stuff that was going on that's what it was right. for mm-hmm. and i just told him i called it ghost of carmel maine that way you guys can find it yeah you know, i never started a youtube channel before so that's how it all got started i mean it's next thing i know there were other people subscribing <laughs> and quite a few huh yeah, yeah. <laughs> the paranormal investigator said she goes can't she goes this is interesting what you're capturing but you need to do it like a documentary you need to explain to everybody yeah. what's going on you need to talk to them and show yourself in the camera you never show yourself people are wondering mm-hmm. who's behind yeah. the camera i said well i don't want to show myself i don't want yeah. to be on camera yeah you know i said that's not what i'm in this for i said i just want you know my friends and family to see what i'm capturing mm-hmm. here mm-hmm. you know but I took her advice since the YouTube channel started growing. It got up to 30 subscribers. (laughs) (laughs) Like everybody wanted me to explain what was going on. So I started explaining stuff in it. I started talking, you know, uh, in fact, I was so impressed with this, that little demo you did about the paranormal challenge. I'm like, you know, I'm so excited about this stuff. Yeah. The people that don't believe in the paranormal will come to this house. <laughs> yes. Because yeah. They'll be like me. I did not yeah. believe in this. You know, yeah. and now I'm chasing ghosts, <laughs> you know. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't. That's what I, I said. Joey, I, my husband's Joey. He's actually watching the live stream right now. I said, I hey, love Joe. Kent. I love everything that he's all about. Like, he just wants to show you, like, he didn't believe in this stuff. And it is real. And these are real people with real stories. And he wants to share it. And I just, 
I was like, he has to be on my podcast. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never, I never wanted to push this ever, you know, yeah. on the YouTube channel, you never hear me ask anybody to subscribe. Yeah. You know, I don't absolutely. say that. I mean, if people want to subscribe, fine. If they don't fine. I mean, it, yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm glad people are learning things. I'm glad people you know, I'm trying to understand all of this. I'm trying to study this stuff, mm-hmm. listen to what these spirits say. Now, in my opinion, it's very important to listen to what these spirits say. I'm trying to connect Absolutely. the dots. I'm trying to yeah. get an understanding what's going on in the afterlife. Mm-hmm. You know, because I've always had this vision when you die, you either go to hell or heaven. There is no in mm-hmm. between. Right. But what these spirits said taught me to go back and redo some studies about what the Bible says about all of this. And I learned, well, right now there's technically no heaven. It hasn't Mm. been created yet. Mm. There's no lake of fire that hasn't been created yet. You know, so I'm like, well, what's going on in the afterlife? You know, and and based on what these spirits have said about it and what they've told me, you know, I'm starting to learn a lot about it. Mm. Yeah. Definitely. And you have quite the hub of spiritual activity in your house. You said at one point you thought maybe it was like a portal of some sort or like a hub of, you know, I don't know, something where they all just keep coming in and out. Yeah. To well, some there's degree. There's no doubt. Yeah. There's no doubt there's a portal in this house. You think so? Oh, yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a doorway into, into the spirit realms. And there's no doubt there's also a dark portal open up in that basement. Uh-huh. Now, I don't know if it's opened up now. I, I did everything I can, you know, to try to close that, try to ignore it, try to reject it, you know, and hope that, you know, by doing what I'm doing, that that thing wouldn't have any more energy to stay mm-hmm. open. But I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. understand how it works. So for my sake i try to be very careful not to do things that would open that further or, or cause some serious issues in this absolutely house. yeah definitely and when people you, come to yeah. visit the house i have a set of rules i mean there's no you, you you can't bring a ouija board in here there's no rituals i don't want any rituals mm-hmm. done at all with you trying to tap into things in fact one guy not long ago came in here and started asking demons in the basement to appear to him and started inviting them in because he wanted to see them and i shut mm. it down immediately mm. i'm just like you know what dude i have to live in this house i said this is over with. yeah yeah absolutely agreed which i do have a question about the basement at some point but i want to get back to what we were discussing um with how you think after you know from where you started in the beginning of everything with just filming for your friends and your family to where you are now how do you feel like this entire journey like not just YouTube but Rachel Naomi and Edmund and everyone how do you think all of this has affected you as a person well it's definitely affected me in a lot of ways Mm -hmm. um I don't I don't see life like I used to see it Mm -hmm. and it's kind of a two-edged sword it can affect you in a good way but it can affect you in a bad way you know it's pretty mind-boggling when you're standing there talking to spirits and they answer you in real time Mm. and that's that can actually shake you up i don't know if i answered that question right but no yeah absolutely rachel naomi edmund patty i mean yeah in the beginning there's Anna just all yeah. kinds of names come at me just yeah absolutely trying to solve these is it doesn't happen overnight mm. you know we're not on their uh time plane if that makes any sense I mean when they when they're telling me something it could take them days weeks months just to get out what they're trying to say mm. and unfortunately there's a lot of times I miss what they're saying or I don't understand what they're trying to tell me. Mm-hmm. Right, right, absolutely. Um, I guess my next question is going to be, let's see, another multi-layer question. Sorry, I got a lot of questions for you. <laughs> um, 
I wrote, I understand that within the realms of the paranormal, there are humanoid spirits and then there are non-humanoid spirits. Uh, the the non-humanoid could be demonic in nature. Is that your belief? You feel like yeah. the ones that, yeah. But All right. no, there's good non-humanoid spirits too. Don't get me wrong. Really? I would be interested to hear more about Some your thoughts on probably, that. Some people probably, you know, Christians would call them angelic. But good point. I've heard spirits talk that gave me information. It may be one or two words, but what they said was so powerful. The meaning behind that one or two word, they warned me, mm, mm. you know, uh, careful Kent, you know, they'll say careful Kent. Right. Uh, they'll, their voices are so smooth with no, it's mm. almost like there's no personality behind what they say. Mm. It's just a message. I mean, just one or two words and it's, those one so or two words can open up your understanding to what they're trying to say or what's going on. That is so interesting. I thought this whole time, maybe like non-humanoid, I, I just assumed it was just demons, but that's a great no, point. Not just angelic. Demons. I don't great. bring it up on the YouTube channel because I try, I try really hard to leave my beliefs out yeah. of, out of these investigations. Yeah. I do talk about them, you know, on the group page. Sometimes I mm -hmm. do, mention them in the video when it's necessary to mention them but i i don't want to shove my beliefs down anybody's throats mm, yeah. and i don't even know if my beliefs are right if that makes any sense it so does make sense yeah i try to be careful not to cram what i think down people's throats i mean i show them i show them the material i show them what's captured right. i put it together they can decide what you know what right. they think about it absolutely so. do you feel like this is a side note side note question do you feel like your beliefs not necessarily in god um but i guess maybe your whole ideology of everything that you maybe believe before you were in the house in terms of your faith do you feel like that's changed at all oh 100 percent. really um hold on i need to get a drink oh you're fine you're fine I forgot my drink. I should probably go grab. Which, by the way, while you're taking a drink, you have had orbs peeking and peeking back out and going across your face the whole time you've been talking. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, almost like they're, like, looking in to see what you're looking at and then looking back. It's crazy. Uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. I haven't I seen one in a while, but, I yeah. I don't see any dust floating around. I think you got some buddies with you right now somewhere. But anyway, go ahead. What you were gonna say? Oh, I forgot now. Oh, I was <laughs> like asking about. <laughs> <laughs> They're very like wide and bright. I guess that's Excuse how me. I kind of know. You know oh, you're fine. While we're on the subject of orbs, yeah, I. In the beginning of this, I thought everything that floated by the camera was an orb, but. Mm. I started dust. noticing looking at the light closely and I can see a dust ball go, by, you know, a little piece of dust floating by and then I'd see it on the camera. I'm like, man, those are dust. How embarrassing. Uh, I'm sitting here showing on the YouTube channel calling all these things <laughs> orbs. I didn't know. I didn't know anything about investigations. Yeah, I mean, I think you did great. I, but, I don't know. But there are definitely orbs that are not <laughs> dust balls or bugs because I've been touched by them. Mm. And you know it's it's hard to distinguish between the two sometimes but you know you know when there's there's definitely an orb i mean it could be an orb here but i don't i don't see Maybe. any dust do you remember when you had adam on and you asked this was a long time ago this was probably three or four years ago early on and you had asked for one of the spirits to maybe manifest themselves as an orb and literally like i mean simultaneously they showed up yeah twice and I was yeah. like, oh my God, right in front of yeah. Adam too. I would have had a heart attack and left, but and yeah. My granddaughter, I, my granddaughter, I want to see an orb. So I'm sitting here, can you like, manifest yourself in an orb? <laughs> and all of a sudden it looked like there's this stuff going everywhere. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. I'm like, Isn't that crazy? Weird. I, yeah, this is all very new to Brenna. She's like, just now I just introduced her to your channel and yeah, yeah. so she's been very interested in what you have to say. Um, That's anyway. why I've been playing more of like a backseat role I'm just taking everything yeah, just in. listening <laughs> yeah I'm the, I'm the one who wrote all your questions because I'm like yay Kent's gonna be here I got lots of questions <laughs> for you um let's see so all right 
this is another, this is a part of the question that I was going to ask, but last week we had another guest who's actually in the chat right now, Samantha, who spoke about a non-humanoid spirit. I, did you watch the video? It's okay if you didn't. Yes, I did. You did. Okay. She had a non-humanoid spirit that embodied nothing but pure fear. Um, you've spoken about the demonic creatures, imps, and I thought maybe you could give a brief background on what those are, how you've come to know them, and do you think that it could possibly be related to with what she shared? Maybe? <clears throat> well, I do know that non-humanoid spirits come in different shapes and sizes. I've, I've seen them, and I got a picture of one that is, is heads all the way up into the ceiling, and he's pure black. Mm. And I've seen them real small, mm. real small. Or either that, that's just the only way they can manifest at the time. I don't know. But as far as with imps, I know there's no doubt I was dealing with imps, what people called imps inside this house in the beginning. Definitely. Because they're only like three feet tall. And, and I couldn't tell if they were an animal or a humanoid being. There, the one jumped out of the window. Of course, once again, everybody either says that was my cat or I had a shirt yeah. tied to the window and I had strings on it pulling it. Yeah, yeah whatever. But yeah, no, you could literally see him bending his knees and then proceeding yeah. to jump up. Yeah, it was crazy. But yeah. <laughs> then there is one that I came in through the door and there's one just sitting there levitating over the bed. That oh. was the same size of the one that jumped out of the window. But then when I was doing another investigation, there's one outside in the tree just looking at me. It jumped down and was running across the parking lot, the front mm. of the house. That was three feet tall. It was a grayish mm. in appearance. It looked like a little Tronosaurus mm. that was three feet tall running away. It wasn't mm. an animal because it, it was on two legs running away from the house. Mm. Mm, mm. as far as them attacking that, that they never attack right you never hear them say anything in fact unless you see unless you see, if a blind person was standing there they would have never known that was that an imp is standing there right in front of them right right but i was questioning what are these you know i started doing some studies on them and there have been people yeah i got them all right here yeah yeah imps oh, go ahead i'm sorry yeah, I mean, those those can be pretty creepy, very startling. Mm -hmm. And why they come around, I don't know. But I can tell you after, I don't know if you ever saw that voice, uh, that video, the voice of pure evil. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was down in that basement and I started rebuking left and right, mm -hmm. told all the evil to get out of this house, stay away. Yeah. You know, absolutely. you're not welcome in this house. I reject you. And yeah. That I never saw an imp again after that, mm -hmm. that I'm aware of. I do Very still see apparitions. I'd, I've, you know, I've still come across larger demonic entities. Sure. Uh, while doing investigations, but those little tiny, pesty, brat little imps, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah, I mean, I haven't yeah. seen anything that small, except the, the closest thing that is that small recently i'm not sure how tall it was but on the steps this um entity turned around and looked at the camera i think he was looking for me but it's strange because a little bit before that this female uh, evp was captured said they're watching you and oh my god oh when i brightened yeah. up that video i'm like what is, i was like what is that moving Ooh. so i brightened up the vid video i'm like oh god, come on i'm like what the hell is that oh my god that, that creeped me out i mean I'm, then i'm questioning how many times are these things standing there in dark places in this house mm. when i'm doing an investigation or sleeping at night mm. and you don't see them because they're hiding in the dark mm. absolutely you know that's creepy that's, that's so scary. That's really creepy. Ooh. But you got the, the thing is, you got to stand firm with these things. I mean, yeah, these things come into our realm and around us, and we are actually in control of our realm. Mm -hmm. We actually have authority in our realm. When these things come around in our realm, they do not have authority in our realm. They mm -hmm. may scare people and make them think make people think they're very powerful and that there's nothing you can do but that's not true i mean they're liars mm. Mm. Definitely. They, 
feed off fear. And right. when when they scare people, I mean, you know, to, to them, I mean, that's just another notch in their belt, you know, and they torment people when, mm. and this is the same issue with the investigation I did in Southwest Harbor. I mean, this poor lady was, she was getting knocked around by demonic entities and, mm. you know, and I kept telling her, I said, look, you're going to have to stand up and show them that you're not afraid. But she right. didn't know how to do that. She goes, I am scared. I said, well, that's why they're all over you. That's why mm. they're attacking you. They know you're scared. Wow. Definitely. Oh, yeah. That also reminds me of another question I wanted to ask you. I wanted to talk about Rachel first, but like I really, really want to get into your um, investigations with the two teens or the four teens rather that died. Um, I think what you did was just incredible. I really do. Um, so I'm just going to read you my question. Um, anytime anyone gets on the topic of the paranormal and why I genuinely believe it's real, I send them to your channel. I really do. However, oh, the one you. video that I find deeply important for people to watch, like I literally, I don't just send them to your channel. I specifically, I'm like, watch the crossings. Absolutely watch it. Cause it, it makes me want to go out into some, I have a crash site that's actually near my house with a boy that died at like 2 AM on Halloween, two years ago. And I just think what happened to him was so awful. And I was right here. I was right in my house when it happened. And I, I was deeply moved by your video because of that situation that happened with me. But, um, so you were able to through using your investigation equipment to not only discover that their souls were still there, they were still lost, that they were still attached to that crash site, but you connected these young lost souls with their longtime grieving parents for years. They didn't know this was going on. Um, uh, you found a way to give them all peace and saying goodbye. And I cry every time I watch this video and I'm a mom and I, I can't imagine the pain that I would feel in losing my daughter. So for you to have been able to do this, it was just, incredible truly I mean it was like a gift that you were able to give these parents um so thank you for doing that um this documentary that you created was genuinely it was some of the most remarkable content that I have ever watched and I think it's incredibly underrated I wish that YouTube would have made millions of people watch this stuff <laughs> I think um I think everyone should see what you were able to do in this investigation. That's why I really wanted to have you on is because a lot of people are attracted to your channel because of shadow dude. And I think yeah. he's cool too. I love, I loved all that stuff from the guy that's sitting on your bed, but truly I think what you're really interesting for is the fact that you're able to help these spirits move on. And you were able to do that with kids that have died, not only like a hundred years ago, but like seven years ago, 10 years yeah. ago you know, and talk to their parents in real time. I think that's incredible. Um, so tell us a little bit about that and how that, how that specific investigation or investigations, how did those shape you? Well, it, it's, it started out, first of all, I don't, I don't go around conjuring up spirits, if that makes any sense. Absolutely. You know, yeah. if there's like some, if, for instance, Jimmy's car accident scene here in Carmel, I didn't show up there and say, hey, Jimmy, are you here? That's not what I do. Yeah, I mean, to me, yeah. that's tacky. Yeah. I go out and investigate places that people claim that are haunted just out of curiosity. Okay, is it haunted or is it just their imagination or I whatever? Gotcha. Somebody was telling me uh, in Levan on Dead Man's Curve is what they named that because so many people has been killed over there hitting trees and plus there's a, a couple cemeteries there they said it was extremely haunted mm. and you need to go over there and check it out so i'm like oh okay so i go over there and check it out not knowing the full history of the place in the beginning i do some filming just out of curiosity if anything's going to be captured i get an idea of where it's at i take all my stuff back home i'm going through it and when i was going through the, the footage I did hear what I thought was a disembodied voice of a female that was mm -hmm. captured, but it wasn't really clear enough for me to, to show in the YouTube video that, Hey, look, I captured this, but it just wasn't quite clear enough. Mm -hmm. So I decided to do investigation in my house and ask questions about dead man's curve. See if any of these lamb house spirits can tell me anything. And, and let me tell you something. Some of these lamb house spirits are like an encyclopedia. If I want yeah. to know something, I'll go and ask them. You know, and they <laughs> usually give me the information that sends me on the right direction. That's so funny. Yeah. You know? 
you know, but then they're like, hey, Ken, you're, you're my point. friend, you know, I'm like, hey, hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and hey, guys, I got a question, I need help. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not only do they say help me, I only say help me myself, so, you know, we kind of scratch yeah. each other's backs there, but yeah. when I was doing the investigation here, there's a female, I, I, I came back and did some studies, and I found out there was a car accident there that two females died there and they committed suicide. They just mm. rammed their car right into a tree. And I'm like, well, mm. that's a little strange, but yeah. that's kind of a really bad way to go. Yeah. But when I was doing the investigation here in this house, after I got that information, a female spirit said, am I dead? Mm. And that's when I answered, I said, uh, yes, yes, you are dead. And I knew instantly who that was. That was Cass Roberts from Died on Dead Man's Curb, one of the teenage girls. Mm. We hope you're enjoying this week's episode of Two Ghouls so far. Your listenership is the sole reason we're able to do this. If you're enjoying today's episode, we hope you'll follow the link in my Instagram account at hello.spooky and support our podcast for as little as 99 cents a month. Any amount helps to better this podcast, really get this show off the ground, and it provides us financial means to bring you, the listener, even better content each week. Thanks so much for your listenership and patronage. investigation on that what was pretty amazing she did communicate and there was a lot of stuff that happened in that investigation that the mother asked me not to show on the video you know because it was it was personal and private for the family absolutely but i did learn those girls did not commit suicide that was not Mm. suicide Mm. and what confirmed it to me when this accident happened cass roberts was wearing her seatbelt. If you're having a pact that you're going to commit suicide in a car hitting a tree at 100 miles an hour, why would you wear your seatbelt? Yeah. That, that didn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Why was it believed that they were trying yeah. to commit suicide instead of There an was accident? a note found in the car that, you know, that they said they were lovers and because of what was going on, you know, because of the parents that they were just going to gotcha. kill themselves, basically. I gotcha. But oh. that's not true. None of that's mm. true. None of that happened. That's not what happened. In fact, I found out what happened. They were ran off the road that mm. night because that's of awful. stuff going on. Somebody was chasing them and ran them off the road. Wow. That's how they died. Mm. And the driver so was trying to get away from this person because of <gasps> some crap going on. Oh, wow. But I let the mother listen to all the evidence of what I captured. And she said, that's exactly what happened that wow. night when those girls died and and she cried in fact she moved back wow. to maine after that investigation she had to leave because wow. she couldn't it was so heartbreaking for her to live here in maine but after that investigation she moved back to the state of maine she really? had to well wow. in the jimmy case somebody told me irish road's haunted you got to go down irish road it's haunted everybody's telling me that there's stuff going on in irish road so i go down to irish road and i don't know much of the history about it i'm new to all of this and i really don't like wanting to know the history of a place i'd rather go down there if you say this is haunted let me go down there let me see what i capture yeah if i'm capturing some things down you know wherever then i want to go check out the history because if there's any type of history that's going to match up to the capture then i know i'm on the right track yeah you know i like a challenge i like i like to be able to solve things so when I was down there, there's two teenage voices that kept saying, help me, I'm scared. And they kept repeating that over and over again. And I could mm. tell that they were teenagers. Mm. That's so so I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's pretty strange. I mean, what's going on on this road? So I, did, I, I went ahead and started investigating the history behind Irish Road, asking people's questions. And they said, well, there were two teens that was killed in Irish Road back in 2011. So I got the newspaper story on that. I started reading that. Mm. 
And I'm like, wow, I wonder if this could be those two teenage boys. So we go back to do an investigation right at the, at the accident scene and doing the investigation using a spirit box, a, a voice answered back when I said, what's your name? And the voice said, Jimmy. I'm like, well, okay, that's not the guy that died, you know? And the guy that owns the property said, oh, he said, Jimmy. Yeah. You know? And I said, well, yeah, but this guy's name was James. And, yeah. You know, You're like, he goes, yeah. yeah I wouldn't have put Jimmy. that together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he went by Jimmy. I'm like, what? So yeah, that's crazy. I'm like, okay, there's the confirmation. I know this is Jimmy. Yeah. So I decided to have a little, I went, I came back by myself one night and decided to have a little talk with him. You know, and I explained to him, Jimmy, look, you know what? You're 16 years old. What you did was stupid. Mm. All right. No doubt. It was stupid. You killed yourself and you killed your best friend. Yeah. I said, but yeah. I did some stupid stuff before. Of course, I didn't show any of that in the video because, that, yeah. you know, that we was, all have. I explained to him stuff that I did in <laughs> yeah. vehicles when I was younger. And I, I right. really, I should have got some serious tickets, but oh um, yeah, I kind of understood being a teen and you're in a car and the thrill yeah. um, just doing stupid stuff. I said, I understand that, Jimmy. I said, we all do that. All guys do that. Mm -hmm. I said, but what happened with you was an accident because he was feeling guilty about killing his friend. I said, it was an accident. And mm -hmm. I said, I can tell you right now, nobody's holding that against you. Nobody's angry at you. And mm -hmm. I wasn't capturing the other teenager that was in the car at this point in time. It's like, he wasn't even around. Mm -hmm. It was just Jimmy. And I had no doubt Jimmy was, was carrying so much guilt over this that I had a serious talk with him. Yeah. After that, later on, I, and, and even Rachel showed up for that investigation. She said, um, I saw, yeah. she, I can't remember what she said because she showed up to that. And then I was talking with a suicide victim and, and she showed up mm -hmm. to that. I think the suicide victim one, she said, there's hope. And there's, I never really, I'm sorry, say she, that again. You cut out. What'd you say? the suicide victim when i was talking to a suicide victim rachel stepped in and said really loud there is hope oh wow you know but i never really showed that investigation on the video because it was the, the suicide was too recent everybody would have known exactly who it was mm -hmm. and the story behind it so i just it's That's on file though. maybe one day i'll yeah. show it but i really don't want to yeah. tell the whole person's name unless the family approved it you know, and the family's never contacted me. So, um, yeah. you know, I never went any further with it for right. a video. But when I showed Jimmy's investigation on the Irish Road the first time, I get a message on my messenger. And it was a lady that says, hi. She goes, I'm Jimmy's mother and I'd like to talk with you. Wow. I saw that video. And I'm wow. like, uh oh. <laughs> yeah, I would have been like, oh, no. I'm in no. a lot of trouble. <laughs> poor lady's upset that I oh, wow. put her son on a YouTube channel and trying to make yeah. some ghost story out of it. Yeah, yeah. That's not my intentions. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not yeah. there to hurt anybody or, or yeah. you know, but make a spectacle of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I right. She asked if she can come to the house and talk with me, and I'm like, okay. She's gonna show up to the door and blow me away with a gun and I'm going to end up with all these little <laughs> house spirits, you know, she's upset. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't know what to think. <laughs> so she comes in and she comes through the door and just threw her arms around me and hugged me. And I'm like, Phew. Oh, wow. You know, she goes, I'm telling you right now, she goes, I watched that video and that voice is Jimmy. Oh my she God. Goes, that was definitely Jimmy. Wow. Um, so we did an investigation in this house out of curiosity because i kind of had a feeling jimmy is kind of staying close to me yeah. kind of tagging around but we did an investigation in this house and he said something to his mother that only those two knew mm -hmm. i didn't know you know yeah. and she said jimmy you know tell me something um that only you and i would know and he said tater tot oh. and i'm like and okay, she knew. whatever that means yeah she yeah. knew exactly that's what oh. she called him when he was little was oh, wow. oh my so God. she knew immediately that was him <laughs> that's gonna make me cry that's well, really I felt sweet. like okay she got some closure 
you know all is good absolutely yeah months later i go back out to i well weeks later i go back out to irish road to investigate mm-hmm. the irish settlers and do an investigation on that and i was about 100 yards away from the accident scene and in investigating one of the where the irish settlers houses were mm-hmm. and all of a sudden the name jimmy comes up and i'm like well Jimmy, if this is really you, verify to me what's your mother's name. And he said her name's Kathy. He wanted to talk to his mother. Mm. So I'm like, wow, you know what? Okay. So I get a hold of Kathy. I said, Kathy, I, I, I've, I've encountered Jimmy again. He wants to talk to you. So she comes back out to the accident scene and we're doing an investigation and that was something I'll never forget. I mean, they were little, literally standing there talking with each other. I didn't show everything because it was private. Right. But when she said, I love you, Jimmy, and he instantly a- answered her back and said, I love you, mom. Uh, that was mm-hmm. uh, just unbelievable. That that was closure Incredible. for both of them. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, you know, I just thought that was amazing. Yeah. so you know the, the news so media did a story yeah. on that and both of them came to this house to do the story on it and both of them actually encountered paranormal activity here in the house <laughs> but the guy that was uh, the cameraman for the news knew jimmy and wow. he was a scout master when jimmy was in in you know scouts yeah, and he said, wow. oh, no doubt that was Jimmy's voice. Wow. No wow. That's crazy. <laughs> so, but anyway, that wasn't a very emotional. Mm. I cried. I mean, I did cry. Oh, yeah. I, I know too. I'm a big guy, but, you know, I bought <laughs> my eyes out on that one, especially oh, yeah. when I was looking at little Jimmy's face singing. Oh. And knowing oh, I just heard from him, knowing mm. I was able to help a family just mm. caused me to break down. That's now, incredible. Yeah. The second most emotional investigation I've ever been on was the investigation in Bangor, and it was called The Girl in the Window. Mm. And this was the murder of a five year old girl. Mm, I remember this. And yeah. yeah, her name was Tabby L. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. That was extremely emotional. That the investigations was... with Rachel was extremely emotional. Oh, but yeah. I can tell you now, this next video coming up, mm. that's another power-packed another investigation full of emotions. I mean, oh. you know, it, it caused me to shed a tear, mm. you know, over these encounters. Um, I'm really excited to watch that one. But you do want people to watch The Lady in White, or what was the name of this one precursor video? Uh, you it's had coming wanted? out this weekend. It might come out even sooner. But what was um, it? someone had posted a video for it, us to watch yeah it was i did an investigation about the lady in white that's right and yep. i was trying to figure out who she was and, and back then i never figured it out i finally I figured out who she is ah i see and all right it, it just blew me away i mean it just totally mm. blew my mind the encounters over and the whole situation behind the story of this Mm. i'm like yeah you gotta be kidding me i mean this is when there's no doubt in my mind how powerful and real the paranormal is yeah yeah but yeah this is an amazing story it's i'm excited yeah it's it's up there on the list with rachel and Cass, jimmy uh taviel yeah speaking of rachel i had another question about her and this will be like one of the last questions. I'll, I won't keep you for much longer. Um, let's talk about your basement. I know it's like kind of a hot spot for not the best activity and we don't have to linger with that talk, but um, what are the first few things that come to mind when I bring up the topic occurring around the activity in the lamb house with the basement? Um, Rachel has a lot of ties to the basement, doesn't she? Not anymore. Mm. Um, Rachel's pretty much moved on. I mean, she does show up now and then. But, you know, the spirits kept saying Rachel's in the basement. She's buried in the basement over and over and over again. And to be honest with you, I didn't know what to believe on that. 
you know, I didn't know what to think. You know, I'm like, well, you know, I kind of questioned, well, why would she be buried in the basement? These, in my opinion, I felt like these spirits were kind of saying some off the wall stuff, but, mm-hmm. but it started making sense because where they said she was buried, I did capture an apparition right outside the window close to where they claimed that she was buried. When I went under the house, then a female voice said, you found me. Oh, my God. When I got to the spot where they claimed that she was buried, my daughter-in-law was standing in the kitchen one night, and all of a sudden, right in that spot, right above where the spirits claimed that Rachel was buried, her hair just stood up. Oh, my God. And they stayed there. So I'm like, okay, there's got to be something to this. So I decided to go in there and start digging and digging. Well, it was so muddy and water everywhere, and and I ended up finding what looked like mummified skin with bones oh, attached to it and a piece my. of clothing material. Ooh. What? And I'm like, okay, this is really strange. So mm. I, I took pictures of that and I sent them to a, uh, a person that I know that was involved with orthopedics. I said, can you tell me if these are human? And she answered back and said, yeah, those are... Looks like two of those pieces of the bones are, are human uh, foot bones to the human foot. Holy cow. Wow. And I'm like, are you sure? She goes, well, I'm, I'm not sure unless I examine them closely. She goes, but <laughs> she goes, I'm pretty sure those are human foot bones. So, I, you know, of course, second Ooh. opinion. Yeah. So I sent it in uh, the pictures to uh, another person that studied, you know, that's in the amp- anthropology. And they said the same thing that those look like human uh, foot foot bone fragments wow and there's a lot of other fragments found but he said he couldn't determine whether those are human or not he'd have to have them and test them and so on and so forth and i said well what would that cost and i'm like yeah i don't have the funds for that but you know i kept those on file and i even Mm. called uh main state police to talk to them Mm. about it and they said Mm. well how old are the bones i said oh they're well over 100 years old no doubt Hmm. You know, and, I, and somebody did come by and kind of peeked at them. He goes, yeah, he goes, you know, the thing is, they're not going to open up an investigation when, you know, at, at, at the moment, there's no active murder investigation. They do have cold cases involving serial yeah. killer James Hicks. They're still investigating, but none of that has connections to this house. Okay. And they did make a good point. They said, you know, They said, you need to understand, back in the day, uh, loved ones were buried on properties that they own, Mm. you know, and there's more than likely was a burial there where somebody buried their loved ones and and don't molest it, don't mess with it. And Mm. they're not going to spend the money coming over here extricating the grounds over bones that looked over 100 years old. They just weren't going to do that. There was no active murder investigations unsolved that had anything to do with this property right right here so they just told me to leave it alone okay so you know but still what's strange when in the winter time when the ground thaws out and they're in it's what we call muddy season the water starts washing under the under the house and comes through that hole in the basement Oh, and lands no. on on the, the, the concrete floor in the basement mm. well when that happens i'm finding more bone fragments oh my mm. god Woo. and one of the spirits that were captured it sounded like a child in one of the investigations he says pick up the bones and ashes oh so that's what i'm doing i'm collecting these bone fragments wow and let me tell you something there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes of mm. ghosts of carmel maine there's a lot of stuff going on behind these investigations mm. and i don't publicly talk about it but we will pretty much 100 solve what's going on here really there's no doubt i mean there's somebody wow. that's willing to put up the funds to continue the investigation on this but with mm. this COVID 19 situation a lot of stuff has been put on the back burner Mm. give us a small i guess you know description of pretty much the rachel murder situation possible murder with 
her child and everything else that's going on, just for the people that don't know what we're talking about. Well, Rachel Mitchell, um, when these spirits said that her last name was Mitchell, and I asked Rachel specifically, Rachel, what's your last name? And she said Mitchell multiple times. Mm. You know, I'm like, oh, that's strange because I've already did an investigation on Naomi Mitchell. Mm -hmm. And Naomi Mitchell was murdered in, in 1912, for those of you that don't know. Well, I went to Ancestry.com and I found that there was a Rachel Mitchell that was born in 18, 18, let's see, what, 1892. Wow. Now, since... I've done these investigations. Somebody got on Ancestry.com and changed her birth date to 1912. All right. And I know who did that. You know, the dude's a jerk. He wants to prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. But he said that Rachel never existed and I'm making all this stuff up and blah, 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 blah. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, whatever. You know what? I already talked to the Mitchell family and I we saw. have 100% concrete proof Rachel did exist. She died mm -hmm. in the village of Carmel. Mm -hmm. And one of the persons that is, who's very old, who his grandmother was Naomi's friend. In fact, Naomi stopped at her grand at his grandmother's house. And she was a child back then and asked, you know, his grandmother to walk to the store with her that day and her mother wouldn't let her. So mm -hmm. he has inside information. Mm -hmm. So I was talking to him. I said, have you ever heard about the Mitchell girls? Do you know if anybody besides uh Naomi Mitchell tragically died and he said he does remember hearing that one of the Mitchell kids was pregnant out of wedlock and she was so humiliated and blackballed that she ended up committing suicide really wow. I didn't know that hmm. so I went back and did the study on the Mitchell girls and that the only one that could have been was Rachel because all the other mm -hmm. Mitchell girls, another Mitchell girl died at one years old mm -hmm. and all the other Mitchell girls were grown up, had children, married and died at an older age. It was a process of elimination that right. only left Rachel. Wow. So, you know, I had to go with that plus the confirmation that Rachel did exist. She died in the village of Carmel, mm -hmm. but the guy that, I don't know, you said you saw that interview. He okay. wasn't sure how she died. Mm -hmm. And I found online in 2001, another Mitchell descendant thought that maybe Rachel was murdered. And that was in 2001. Mm -hmm. That was before I ever moved to the state gotcha. of Maine. But okay. I got copies of that. I started doing a deep, in-depth research into all of this. Some uh, people that were married in the Mitchell family never even heard of Rachel. Mm -hmm. So, but that's not surprising because this investigation I'm releasing, this this upcoming video, this person's name, most people never heard of her. Mm. You know, even here in Carmel, they never heard of her. So, you know, that doesn't, just because people never heard of her doesn't mean she didn't exist. So, yeah, that was a lengthy investigation. And after I found these bones and did the bone fragments and did the investigation, these spirits kept, kept confirming that's Rachel. That is so fascinating. But after I found these, I started noticing the activity change around this house. I'm not hearing Rachel's disembodied voice anymore, mm. you know, and I'm like, well, where's Rachel? So I decided to do an investigation. I'm like, Hey, you guys, where's Rachel? And then they answered, she's gone. She left. Mm. I'm like, what? That's kind of heartbroken, <laughs> you know? But, yeah. Oh, I I'm love like, well, Rachel. That's it. Rachel's gone. I mean, uh, dang, didn't they say she's moved on? She's went yeah. into the light or something of that sort. Very she's bittersweet. At peace she's at peace and now but, it seems like she pops up every now and yep, again just to be like jimmy's okay or she hangs out with jimmy and she hangs out with everyone else that it seems like you've been investigating or to some degree yeah, yeah. i mean she, so beautiful the investigation beautiful we did in southwest harbor she came all the way from carmel to southwest harbor just to, mm. that was pretty dark and you know what i just thought it was amazing she showed up there that kind of yeah. blew me away she must really have a good connection with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Okay, well, it gets deeper. <clears throat> um, doing the Irish Road investigation, doing a study into the raw side of the family, because a lady 
died on Irish Road, you know, from a, uh, she was driving down the road and a boat came off the back of a trailer and went through the, mm. the windshield and killed her. Well, that lady, and that happened on Irish Road. Before that happened, her son died in a motorcycle crash on Irish Road, not far from where she was killed. And I'm thinking, what are the odds that two family members die on the same road a thousand feet apart from each other at different time periods? Yeah. And then I find out another son died over on Horseback Road uh-huh. in a car accident. Crazy. I'm like, okay, this is really getting strange. Well, I was talking about um, the Ross. And my daughter says, oh, that's, um, that's Jude's grandmother. You know, my grandson, my daughter's son, his name's Jude. And she goes, that's Jude's grandmother. I'm like, what? Because I know that the Rosses were just descendants to Naomi J. Mitchell, which is Rachel and Naomi's aunt. Huh. Her name was Naomi J. Mitchell. I'm wow. like, are you serious? So I talked to the, started talking at the Ross family because I know the Ross. One guy, yeah, he's, he comes into this house every once in a while and talks with me. And so they're all connected. Me, they're all in connected. A way. That's My crazy. Grandson who lives in the Lamb House is a distant cousin to Rachel and Naomi. No wow. way! Wow. So what are the odds? That's crazy. <laughs> What the heck? And even more strange, when I started these investigations, the night Rachel tapped me on the hip asking for help, two weeks prior to that, Jude and his mom moved into this house. Wow. And wow. That was That's that happened crazy. At 2 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, July 24th, uh, 2017, when that happened with Rachel where she mm. tapped on my hip and asked for help. That's the same anniversary date Naomi Mitchell was murdered on July 24th, 1912. Wow. I just had a comment say like, that's destiny. Like that's crazy. Well, you just posted next- in the group saying something about predestination and now you're starting to see connections and numbers. Well, I fully yeah. believe in it now. Yeah. The reason why I asked that because this next video Oh, I'm so oh my excited. God, the same thing. I'm like, you know, I kept, I, I kept the more I dug on this, wow. this investigation, I'm like, like, I'm scratching my head. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. This I'm is like, insane. You've got to be kidding me. I mean, what are the odds? I don't want to say too much about it because I don't want to give yeah. away this investigation, yeah. but yeah. I'm like, Yeah. That you know, incredible. that's what I posted on the group page. Did, what do you guys have to say about predestination and no kidding? And fate, yeah, fate. I mean, because I'm not one yeah. that is big on fate, yeah. But doing wow. these investigations, my mind has changed on a lot of topics. Fate, Definitely. predestination, Definitely. the supernatural things behind mathematical numbers, mm. um, things that that people have done to open up gateways in the spiritual realms. I mean, these, this, this stuff is very, very real. Right. And there is no doubt people can open up gateways into a spirit, spirit realm and communicate with the dead based on biblical teachings. Oh, that's forbidden by God, mm. you know, not to do that, but it did mm. happen in the Bible where when Saul, King Saul, wanted to talk to Samuel and he got a hold of a medium and that medium conjured up Samuel. I mean, Samuel, he was pissed off. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he came and talked to Saul and he was pissed off. Why asking that, you know, medium, why you disturbed me? Yeah. You know, so it's, it does exist. (laughs) It, It there's, you know, it's real. There are real mediums out there, real spiritualists. Now there's a lot of fake ones. You know, yeah. there's, there's, you know, it's like, there's a lot of, you've got real stuff, counterfeit stuff and everything Definitely. in life. Definitely. You know, it's just the way it is. But, um, but I, I don't know. I just find it really amazing. Fascinating. You know, this, this yeah. situation behind Rachel I, in this next video, it's just so beyond amazing. I am so ready for it. This is awesome. All right. Well, you know what? I don't mean to cut us so short. I say so short because I just want to keep talking about this stuff. It's so interesting. What you are doing is like, it's almost like it's 
what you're meant to do. Like it's your purpose. It's why you were put here. Like you are literally the glue between the sorrow that these spirits are feeling and like where they're at now from, you know, I don't know why you're just making these connections. I just think what you're doing is incredible, but yeah, I appreciate what? that. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I, I personally don't see it that way. But, you know, it's, it's amazing. I, I really feel like it is. I, I yeah. don't believe I have any type of gifts or anything like that or, or any ah. abilities. I mean, I'm just, you know, I just listen to what these spirits say and then I mm. investigate what they say. I mean, is there any truth behind what they're saying mm. or you know, or is this just all hogwash? I mean, mm. it's just like right now with Abby's head situation. I have no doubt somebody did take her, took her head. No doubt. Mm. In fact, I know exactly who did it. I know exactly what happened and I know exactly why, but it's something that I can't talk about on the YouTube channel. And it's something that eventually will come out. But right now I'm getting 100% verification behind everything yeah. before I come out and say things, if that makes any yeah. sense. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And actually I solved who, I actually solved who shadow dude is. Really? Oh yeah. Can you I talk saw. about that a little no. bit if you have time? No. Okay. Well, no, if the family, the, in fact, it was the family that thought that, and I, when I mentioned shadow dude, I'm talking about the face out front, my window that was yeah. smiling on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Talking yeah. about, that is that, that spirit all right i saw who that is and really one day we'll we'll come out and talk about it oh i would love to hear you know, that. the family yeah. asked me to not to say anything because you know they don't want people bothering them where they live because i guess shadow right. has been kind of right. such a big topic that you know i promised mm. them i wouldn't say anything absolutely so we will was definitely yeah. a living person Mm. definitely and it's verified that yes he went around carmel the village of carmel smiling and waving at everybody really yeah. wow I mean, and he's verified. an i can i ask is he a nice spirit he's not he's meaning nice. to scare you no. really yeah, he's good. Nice. that's good now, to know i'm not necessarily saying all these other apparitions captured in the house is the same shadow dude what i call yeah. shadow dude that stood out uh, you know, outside the door. I mean, there's, I don't know, there's different apparitions, different captures. And, mm -hmm. and to be quite honest with you, when, when you have a dark apparition that you run into and you're not sure what it is, mm -hmm. if, if you have any doubts at all, do not pursue it. Do not investigate mm -hmm. it because you do not want to open up a dialogue with something that's evil mm -hmm. because you're opening up that door to something that very good advice very good advice i agree People with wonder that. why i don't push it you know why i don't you know Absolutely. they say well if it was me i would have ran up with the camera no if you were here and saw this you would have ran out the door crap in your pants absolutely you know, when you see this in real time these videos don't do any justice of what it's like in real that's time. what i'm saying and ken i don't face know face to face with an i don't get it i don't get how you see this and you're like oh I'll post this on a computer on YouTube in the same room that I saw it in. Or how do how do you sleep in that room? I just don't <laughs> With the TV get it. Really loud in the fan well, I was really I saw loud. I see I saw one in one video. You had like everybody loves Raymond on all tape, and I was like, that's what I would be playing the most friendly show that you could watch just yeah. to like. Block you know what it I out. watch every night before I go to sleep? What puts and then I'll put in Star Treks to, oh. to finally go to sleep on. But you know. <laughs> I guess people think I might be watching, you know, paranormal stuff. Oh, I don't. That, yeah, but I do I think watch, that. <laughs> this is funny. Uh, people are probably going to laugh, but every night when I go to bed to tire me out and, you know, I watch, um, did we just lose her? Can you still hear me? Not sure. Yeah. Okay. The biggest loser. Yes. No, I don't. Uh, Oh, oh yeah. let me see you, Katie. We lost let me video. Let me switch to my computer camera. I apologize. I think my camera's battery just died. Yep. Go ahead. Okay. I watched the Danish National Sympathy or Sympathy Orchestra and the Danish National Girls Choir <laughs> and other Danish national. It's called DRs. I can't even pronounce it because it's in their language. 
but I watch these musical things every night before I go to wow. sleep. I don't blame you. Anything, you know how people watch scary movies and then they'll put on like cartoons or like a kid's show to calm down just to like yeah. get your brain out of it. I imagine you have to do that at some point or you get exhausted and yeah. scared all the time. Well, you can't it relaxes like me and I'm sure it relaxes yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure they appreciate it. You know, chill, it's time to go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. That's a good calm point. down, guys. Yeah, all right. Well, before you go, I'm going to take a couple questions from the viewers, if that's okay with you. Because yep, I fine. know I know they are 1,000% ready to ask you some questions. So guys, if you want to throw in some questions, go for it. I know a lot of people were saying like, Kent, your gift is to, what is it? You were, you were- um, Safe with you and yeah. your open mind. Yeah. Your gift is research and your tenacity to get to the truth. I think, I think you're really selling yourself short. I think you have a gift. I really do. I feel like you are really helping these people. You are, you're doing really good work and I think you should keep it up. More curiosity with ambition. Mm. Yeah. I, yeah, I would agree with that, but I mean, it's really helping people. So yeah, keep it up. Um, yeah, guys, if you want to ask them some questions or ask us some questions, ask Kent questions. Now's your okay. time. I can't see any questions on my end. So okay, I'll read them to you. Questions. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. Ask Kent who the stinky ghost is. I feel like I know. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I don't know, but I sure would like to know. If I would have heard that in real time, I would have said, who smells like crap? You know what I mean? <laughs> Ask it. He smells like. I have you know, a question. What is the craziest, like, dumb thing they've ever said to you? Like, nothing like anything serious. What's the craziest, funny thing they've ever said to you? What's something that happens a lot? I would think that ask can't you smell like crap is <laughs> probably up there, but I, I'd ha- you know what? I'd have to think about that one because there's, I think the strangest thing that, funniest thing that happened um i have a habit of stubbing my toe in this house you know yeah. of course my wife's <laughs> she's sitting there laughing at me <laughs> as i'm jumping up and down with tears because i have an ingrown toenail oh that's the well, worst i just got done stubbing my toe that day or this night before or that day <laughs> i can't remember and while i'm doing the investigation in the house on rachel there's this little smart Alex spirit that decided that he was going to make fun of me. He goes, boom, ow, I stubbed my toe, <laughs> you know, making fun of me. So yeah, that was pretty strange. Another one that was quite embarrassing is I was, I think I was living in, living in the lamb house where I did that video and I was talking about the bathroom, like we don't have any privacy, you know, and then those spirit, those EVPs just captured, got a pee or poo or something. Oh you know, gosh. and they just pretty much verified that they're in the bathroom while I'm, we're in the bathroom. I mean, okay, you know what, you guys? I would be mortified. Oh, my God. I think about that a lot. I'm like, you know, Ken has a lot of activity in his house. I wonder what it's like to just be like a normal human in your own house with all these spirits watching it. I wouldn't. Well, I know that they've been in there and I tell them, get the hell out. But, oh, get I mean, out. Yeah. You, know, you just know because you, you tend to learn, you know how to feel that when they're there mm-hmm. close and then mm-hmm. you start hearing them. And it's like, hey, you know, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> they want to watch. All right. I'm going to take a couple more questions from people. I just, I'm sorry. I took up some time with my own questions. Uh, Samantha um, has a question that I saw. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, okay. Let me find it again. She would really like to know what Kent thinks about her story from last week. Yeah. Which, by the way, you guys can watch that video. It's the last episode we posted. First episode. Go ahead, Kent. Well, I would, um, you know, this is the thing. When people ask me questions like that, even though I hear what they have to say, but I don't, unless I'm there experiencing Mm -hmm. it myself, unless I'm there, you know, doing an investigation, Mm -hmm. it's really hard for me to come out and say what I really think about something, you know, because I don't really have a full 100% understanding what she's going through or what she went through. Mm. But the only, but what I do think about it is, you know, if, if something like that happens again, or if it continues to happen again, is just keep rejecting it, Mm. you know, keep Mm. putting your foot down and, and rejecting. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's really good advice because I know she's not the only one that's been through something like this. For sure. I mean, a lot of people ask me questions. Well, this is going on in my house. What do you think? I'm like, well, I don't know. You know, I'm not there. I'm not experiencing it. I have no idea what's going on. I, I, I don't mm. know what's causing it. I don't know if you got a humanoid spirit there or, or a de, you know, demonic entity. I wouldn't know unless I did an investigation. Right, right. Um, and I don't want to answer people's questions if I honestly don't know. I believe absolutely. that, you know, don't act like a know-it-all, like you know everything. And, absolutely. You know, you just assume, you know, the paranormal is the same everywhere because mm -hmm. it's not. Mm -hmm. And that's why people appreciate you, Kent. You're very humble and you're very like cut and dry. Like, I don't know about that. So I'm not going to answer it. And we appreciate mm -hmm. that. Um, you, know, you know, after the Jimmy investigation and that made the news, there are some people that contacted me and asked me if I can contact their loved ones for them. You know, I'm and sure. it was so sad. I mean, it was very sad when they oh. asked me that because they were yeah. so heartbroken. And I and I had to apologize to them. I said, look, that's mm. not what I do. I said, that mm. was just a amazing miracle that that even happened with Jimmy Absolutely. and Cass. I said, yeah. but I don't go around, you know, trying to contact people's dead loved ones. I, I don't do that. I just investigate right. what's going on. Right, which I appreciate that because it can seem like a spectacle at that point when you're just yeah. running around like, is anyone here? Yeah, so I appreciate that. Um, but it is, I can imagine that's very hard to do to reject these parents and be like, I'm sorry, I can't do that. It's sad, I mean. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. look, my sister died in 2019. I never got to say goodbye to her. Oh, you wow. know, I never got, she died suddenly. And then while we we're grieving over that, then a month later, my dad died. Mm -hmm. and never got to say goodbye to him same situation i mean two deaths she died on january 13th my dad died on february 13th wow. and her death killed him basically and i never got to say mm -hmm. goodbye to them but i've never once ever attempted to contact them yeah yeah and i've never heard from them either mm. yeah um and I'm really sorry for your loss. I don't want to just jump into the next question after something like that. That is very awful. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Jump into the next <laughs> okay. question. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Jimmy Flynn wants to know, Haunted Arizona is actually great as well. Any more episodes with them in the future? If they ever want to come back, they're welcome All right. to come back. Okay. That's a good answer. Uh, camp Edna and the Spiritualist Camp. Not sure if that was a question. Just kidding. That's going to be in the upcoming video. <gasps> That's what he was asking. That's what I was about to say. All right, there you go. There's your answer, George. Um, Brenna, you want to read off some questions? Uh, I, I have a question from Tiffany saying, do you have any more dream loop experiences since the last one? No. 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 Okay. Daniel wants to know, Kent, any advice on how to endure spirits throwing off your senses and disturb your peace of mind? How to fight oppression or the sense of something really bad is about to manifest in front of you? You know, there's one thing people need to understand is when I did the investigation at Southwest Harbor, I went through some massive oppression. Mm. I mean, massive, almost to the point that they wanted to drive me over the edge and possibly even take my life. Wow. That's how bad it was. Wow. I wow. mean, there was thoughts going through my head like a busy freeway in LA or something. I mean, they're just, just the stuff that I was going through. And I'm wow. like, you know what? These are not my thoughts and the, and the thoughts that the, the feelings that the thoughts created, you mm. know, was just devastating. Mm. The thing is, <sighs> And I tell people this, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from building a nest on the top of your head. Other words, right. you can't help certain thoughts going through your mind, but you can stop from feasting on them and thinking about them. Right. That is a wonderful way to explain that. Yeah. It's really Best insightful, actually. Way yeah. To deal with oppression, number one, is understanding what's causing it. Mm. You know, that's very important. You need to understand what's causing it. Once you understand what's causing it, then you have an ability to, to be able to fight it. Right. And that is great advice. Always, always, always watch positive TV shows or read positive news or keep everything positive. Don't, mm. don't get into anything negative. That's why I shut <laughs> investigations down. Once I'm oppressed, 
it's over mm-hmm. with. The investigations are shut down. I need yes. to recoup. One, and that's why I watch, you know, the Danish National Symphony Orchestra at night because that music's so soothing. It gets my mm-hmm. mind off of everything because I love music. Yeah, yeah. Some of the absolutely. music in my videos I put together myself. Oh. But also, you got to find stuff to laugh at. Watch comedies, yeah. make you know, make fun of things. You know, it's just like yeah, yeah. You know, when I was dealing with this oppression, you know, and I, I'd, I'd say stuff back. You know, I'd answer back when I knew it was demonic. Mm. You know, and I'm always, you know, I just say stuff back to them in a freaking funny way. But yeah, you know, I was like, oh, you already lost. You're not powerful. You stupid freaking absolutely. Moron. You know? Yeah. You know, I would absolutely. stand my ground. Yeah. I mean, when I showed in the last video that I posted things, when I said, this is my house, you know, and I have Absolutely. my own free will, there was a lot more stuff I said that night, but I didn't, I didn't mm. show it in the video, but mm. I had a lot to say, you know, because I, I was, that. I got rid of the oppression once. All of a sudden we have this blood issue where I'm getting like something just took its hand and dug its fingernails right into my skin drawing wow. blood out and then there's blood we want your blood and i'm like well, how you know people don't understand when you're going through that what that can do to your mind absolutely you know and it's like wow are they gonna kill me are they gonna mm-hmm. drive me over the edge where i end up going to the basement and go you know yeah I mean, absolutely are they gonna push yeah. me over that edge that yeah. i give them what they want mm-hmm. you know right. are they gonna keep oppressing me until i give in you know, yeah. that's when I'm like, no, you know what? I have the power of choice. I have a free will. They cannot make me do anything against my choice and my free will. And I'm going to stand on that. And then I'm going to make sure that they understand that I know that, mm. you know, mm. because I know that they lost. I know that they are powerless. Mm-hmm. They do not mm. have power over any human, but mm. they want you to believe they do. They want mm. you to make they want to make you think that they have power over you and they can control you and do anything they want. And another thing I want to touch on is they can't just possess somebody just because they want to. It doesn't work that way. Right. Right. They do not have that ability. The only way they can possess somebody if somebody opens up that door to them. If mm. somebody and I tell people that come into this house, do not ask these spirits to touch you. Don't do it. Yeah. I said, because what will happen is you are opening up that door. You are giving up your free will and opening yourself up to them. And you have no idea what you're opening yourself up to. Absolutely. You have yeah. no idea by opening that dialogue with these spirits, you're inviting them on a personal level to come to you. And I said, I would not do that. And just recently, a lady did that and mm. she got attacked recently in the house this last weekend wow and this is the second attack that's ever happened in this house but i kept telling her do not invite them to touch you she even invite them to push her well she got knocked clear across the basement really and wow i told people i said this is not a joke i mean you don't come in here and and provoke these spirits wow don't do that but see that and I kept telling her over and over. You hear me in the video. I said, "We well, kept asking them to touch you. You kept telling them to touch you." And and she goes, "I know," but she got hit in the back of the leg. And mm. when that happened, that face that was on the stairway peeking around was right down there by her leg. Mm. Ah, oh my God! Are you talking about the video, the promo video that I made, the one where he's peeking over the? No, I'm talking about. Um, uh, what video was that in? I think that was in um, 72 Hours Alone in Lamb House Part 1. Really? Where that, that evil looking entity was peeking around on the stairway oh, looking at the camera. Oh my God. It's almost um, like he was like, yeah, look at what I just did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Like, yeah. Wow. You know, but that same face was down by her foot. It was like sticking up out of the basement. Concrete. Holy cow. Wow. So, yeah, you just got to stand your ground. You've got to take charge. You got to, uh, you know, control your thoughts, control your feelings, know when to back off, know your limits, and always draw a line and mm. do not cross that line. Right know on. the rules of, you know, you just got to have an understanding what to do and what not to do, what lines yeah. not to cross, and Absolutely. always, you know, set these rules up on yourself. 
and always follow the rules that you put on yourself mm. because you know this this can be dangerous stuff no yeah. doubt absolutely that was great I thank you for I saying all that question. oh absolutely and more so yes. that was beautiful yeah great explanation um i think that was really all i was gonna gonna ask you i think that was great thank you so much for coming on yeah we okay a lot of the stuff i just explained tonight about what I just told you just now is stuff yeah. that I've learned in the last four mm. years from doing these investigations, mm. things that I've encountered and things that these spirits said. I mean, I'm probably was basically trained by spirits on how to do a paranormal investigation, <laughs> basically. Mm. That's incredible. That is crazy. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We really, I mean, that was, that was great. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, well, keep up the good work. We'll be watching. Thanks, Ooh, Kent. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right. That yeah. studio will be coming out soon. All right. We will plug all of that in the description for you. So, okay. or your your YouTube channel, because I know the video is not out yet. But yeah, right. thanks so much. All right. Okay, Have a good thanks. night. All right, Bye. 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 Oh, wow. What in the world? That was that crazy. Was, that was crazy. Yeah. Honestly, well, I could say like it was it was a lot for me as like someone who wasn't familiar with him to like take in at times, just like especially yeah. with all the names, because at first, like hearing like Rachel and Naomi, I was like, are these yeah. his family or is he referring to actual spirits right now and it's yeah. just super interesting to hear that he was referring to actual spirits and that he had like That's this relationship funny. with them and mm -hmm. then like he got advice from them and would speak with them and would help them as much as they would help him like absolutely I wow he was that was incredible like I really that was cool thanks so much to Kent for coming on um we're gonna finish off the podcast with some fun stories just to like I don't know keep it on a light note because that was definitely a lot um if you guys want to stick around we'd be happy to have you um we'll be taking questions if you guys want to ask we're gonna do some more um I don't want to call them lighthearted stories because I don't really feel like they are I would say they're just I don't know something to finish out the podcast with but um I do want to say thanks so much for you guys and uh, for joining us. This is really, this has been awesome having you guys here and you guys are so interactive. We love having you here. We hope you'll stick around for future episodes. Um, yeah, I really do feel like this was a great, having Kent on was like a really nice, like look into the background of a lot of the videos that he posts. Like we got to see some of the I don't know, like behind the scenes videos, but um, for the next, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, we're just going to finish out the podcast with some more lighthearted stories that we have prepared for you guys. So Brenna, take it away, take it away. All right, all right. So I have a story um, from a subreddit called Real No Sleep. So I believe they did like a subreddit called like No Sleep. Yeah. And then I guess people were posting like fake stories or whatever. So they created this different one called Real No Sleep. Um, and this was posted by Nat Tuma, not Tamu. So, so I'll jump into it and I'll be reading it as they wrote it. So this one is called The Guy in the Peephole. So this happened years ago in my first apartment when I was in college. I found it a bit weird when I first moved in there that there were two peepholes instead of just one. Someone suggested to me that the lower one was put in for a short lady who used to live there. Mm -hmm. I was there maybe a year or two, and a cousin came to stay with me for a few days. Um, their balcony looked out into a public park with a baseball field directly in front and other activity areas further out to the right. At one point, my cousin, both of us women, cat called a bunch of guys in the park below my third floor balcony. I know, mm -hmm. extremely stupid. And they acted like they were coming over, so we both freaked out. Mm -hmm. I put the TV on the security channel of the camera in the lobby and ran to check the peephole. I looked in the upper peephole and lost it. It appeared to be a guy sitting cross-legged on the floor of the hallway, a little to the right, not directly in front of my door with his back to me. I remember he was wearing a baseball hat 
and a t-shirt. I told my cousin there was this guy in the hall and we both got scared. She checked and saw him too. Nothing happened. The guys outside never came to the security door. We sat there for hours on the edge of our seats, slowly calming down. And that dude was still sitting out there. So I got brave and opened the door. No one there. Close the door, <laughs> look in the peephole. Dude is still sitting there. What? Even oh weirder, my God. he wasn't in the lower, newer peephole. So you know how there was two peepholes? Yeah. He wasn't in the one where you look lower that supposedly was put there for the short lady, but he what? was always in the one that was above. What? So she continues, at one point, weeks after my cousin went home, I noticed one of my neighbors was going out. They made a hell of a racket hauling out camping gear or something, making multiple trips. I stuck near the door waiting and looked at the dude in the peephole. I figured it had to be something stuck to the peephole causing the image that it was some like, if it were true, uh, sorry. And if it were true, someone walking by that area would show the guy image on top of them. So if it was something in the peephole, someone walking by, you would see that image like yeah. still stuck there. What I waited the and my neighbor <laughs> walked out his door again. The image of the peephole guy was covered for a moment by my neighbor until neighbor walked through the guy. It was so weird. They just cut through him like he was an image. What Made me wonder the if the old lady had the new peephole put in to not look through the upper peephole anymore. I'd occasionally check for a few years I was there. He was always just sitting there facing away, not moving at all. Years later, my cousin <laughs> swears up and down that she never saw the guy in the peephole. She has no memory of seeing someone there. And then she continues by saying, my new place only has one peephole. There's nobody uh, in it, thankfully. Let me just say, at George agrees with me, I thought that story was going to go somewhere else, like really far away from what you just said. That is crazy. And the fact that it's like, it's, it's real. Like people, you know, they put it on Reddit real, no sleep or whatever. It's yeah. just, what the hell? Oh like, my God. I don't know. It's interesting to me that they put in a second peephole when there was already one there. They just, their solution was, oh, second peephole. Not to like even try to replace the first one. Like if a skeptic was like, oh, like, something in there like this person was talking about in their story what you know? the heck I just put a second one in <laughs> that's really but weird it's also interesting to me that she says like her cousin years later swears up and down that she never saw the guy in the people in the first place huh go figure like she lost all of her memory of it hmm. all right well that's really fucking scary <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing that one. I think I'm going to read a couple more stories from the email and then we're going to finish out with a very short video. I hope that's okay with you guys. Um, thanks for sticking around guys. We're having a good time with you guys. Hopefully you guys will subscribe to our YouTube channel because we post every week. Um, we're the two ghouls poll podcast. Um, we love having you guys around. We love having you guys be so active this is so much fun having you guys comment with us and chat with us um is it lighthearted? um the video yeah it is lighthearted. i'm gonna say yeah it is sure. i haven't seen it so we'll see yeah i'm excited for it because i found it while i was reading another reddit story which i will share next week i don't think we have time right now as it is we're already at like two hours Yes. So thank you, Kent, for really, he really came in, was a show stopper. I had a good time with him. All right. Let me see if I can grab these emails. I'm just going to read a couple from our anonymous friend. Give me five seconds, guys. So are you guys enjoying the podcast so far? I've, I've, I've been having a great time this episode. <laughs> I would love well, to you hear also you are a huge fan. I think it's very interesting that like, we true. came in with completely different perspectives. Yeah. Like the most I had heard about Kent was like the snippets you had told me about him, but this was also like years ago. Mm. And so it's just very interesting 
yeah. you being a fan and me being like new. I think it helped. He was talking about. Yeah, I think it helped because in a way you were almost like the audience that's never heard of Kent right here right. on the podcast, yeah. which was really, it was a nice uh, change. All right, give me a second. I'm scrolling down. Sleep paralysis. Okay, this is a paranormal section of her email. As a kid, I went through a lot of abuse and neglect. So some nightmares and monsters under the bed were common for me. Yet there were a few times as a young kid, I vividly remember uh, having sleep paralysis. I awoke one night and couldn't move. As soon as I start writing the paranormal section, she's talking about in real time, I get a call from a number I didn't know. So it goes to voicemail and it's just loud sounds for three seconds, something like a flute yet underwater. That happened while she was writing this email. Anyway, my blankets were covering my head, so I couldn't see anything but darkness. I felt this sense of dread come over me and fear like no other. I couldn't scream or move. Then a weight came upon me as if something was sitting on my stomach or chest, which is very common in sleep paralysis, side note. My heart was beating out of my chest as I held my breath. I didn't know what to do, so I began to think of a pretty wildflower field. The warmth, the smells, the beauty. As I did this, the weight lifted from me and I felt less fearful. Another time this happened to me, the covers weren't covering me. I awoke and I couldn't move. I noticed a shadow right outside of my window. My bed was right next to a window. It was the 1990s when you let a toddler sleep next to a window in the city on the first floor. <laughs> the shadow slowly swayed back and forth in the light. On the other side of me near my dresser was another shadow. Some may call him the top hat man, including his red eyes. Again, not wanting to feel this fear and dread, I thought of the field, drifted back to sleep, awaking the next morning, feeling just fine. I think we're going to end with the video. I think those were good two stories to end on. So this next video I'm going to show you, or this video that I'm going to show you guys is what sounds like a woman screaming, but it's not. It's the sound of a mountain lion. And if you really think about it when you're listening to it and you're like, oh my God, is this like a woman screaming? It's not. It's a mountain lion. <laughs> so give me a second. It Let me see. It's lighthearted, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is lighthearted because it's not really scary, but it sounds like it should be. So give me a second. Let's see. How do we share the screen? I feel like I've definitely heard about that, like how mountain lions sound like women screaming, but I don't know if I've ever actually heard it. Yeah, it's really, I found it from this Reddit thread. Let me see if I can pause it. Give me a second. Oh no. In the final cut of this episode, if you guys ever want to go back and watch it, I'll edit out a lot of these like choppy parts where I have to like stop and go and stop and go. I apologize. Oh, I just heard it over my headphones. I can't wait till you guys can hear it. <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. <laughs> Ooh, it's not good to hear in headphones. Warning to those that are wearing headphones. Let's see. I'm wearing headphones. <laughs> oh boy, you're in for a treat. <laughs> okay, let's see. How do I share my screen? Aha. All right. I'm going to share my sound. <laughs> All right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Can you see this? Can you see this video? Mountain cat screams like a woman. Uh-huh. What the heck is going on with my computer? Are you ready? <laughs> ready. <laughs> I hate that video, but I had to share it with you. <laughs> it sounds super distressed. Like it wasn't even just like one high pitched squeal. It sounded like oh. devastated. Oh, it gives me chills. Oh my God. Anyway, that is all. This has been two goals. We're going to share some of our socials in case you guys are interested. Um, let me jump over to the document real fast and I will get that started for you guys. But if you guys enjoyed today's podcast episode, I hope that you will follow our Facebook account, jump onto my Instagram at hello dot spooky where i post all of our two goals content plus halloween content if you guys are into spooky season, that is my thing. Um, let's see. Also, I just want to throw out there for as little as 99 cents a month by following the link in my bio on my Hello 
spooky on Instagram or by following the link in the show notes of the show. Once I upload it on our YouTube, um, you can subscribe to our channel and you can support us and we can give you better content. We can get better equipment to give you better content. We right. can have better <laughs> guests on the podcast. Not better than Kent though. He's the yes. best. I mean, Kent um, was already like top he was, tier, right? Like Kent's up here, but we might be able to get someone that's like right here just a touch closer, you know, but it's, it's completely up to you guys. So yeah, just kind of throw that out there. Um, you can follow Brenna at B R E N N A. Is it underscore or dot Elise? It's underscore. Underscore E L Y S E. And I am hello dot spooky. And I'm also, you can find me at, Hey, I'm Katie Ryan, K A T I R Y A N. Um, yeah. And I hope you guys will jump onto our Facebook as well. We have loved having you guys here. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Yes, thank you so much. We have Bye fun. guys. Yeah, that was great. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.